This is the house prices competition on Kaggle. The competition is about predicting the sales price for each house when you are given a bunch of features about that house. And also as a reminder, if you would like to follow along with me, I'll have the link in the description to where this notebook is gonna be. In the very end, we're gonna have a model and we're gonna have to run the test set through that model where it has 1,460 houses that we need to make a prediction for. The train set has a list of houses with their features and a sale price for what that house actually sold for. The test set has the same features as the train set, but it does not have the sale price. Just making sure that there's no duplicate rows in the train data. It turns out that the target feature, which is the sale price, is a right-tailed skew, which can post a problem if it's left alone, since leaving the outliers in sale price will affect the overall model's performance. I'm just gonna write a note for myself to make sure I do a log transformation on the sale price later. So now to look at the outliers, I'm gonna set up a numerical list from the train set, and I'm gonna see what outliers are present in the data. If you set up a box plot, then you can visually see the data points that are considered as outliers as they're outside of the interquartile range. Here is where some people might start deleting some of the outliers, which is fine, but I'm not going to do that actually. I don't want to risk deleting important data in a row, all because one of the columns has it listed as an outlier. I'm gonna come back to the outliers later. So for now, I'm gonna merge the data sets together so that I just have to do everything once. And then after the data processing is done, I can split the data back up before I need to use it for a train and a test set. For the missing data that's numerical, I'll fill in a zero if it's meant to be represented as none or given the circumstance, sometimes the mean or the mode. And if it's categorical, I'll fill it in with the word none or the mode if that makes more sense for that feature. And as you can see, there is a lot of columns with missing values to fill in. For example, pool quality had a majority of its data missing because it only had four excellent, four good, and two fair ratings. So it means that all of the missing data makes sense that it would just be a house that does not have a pool. So in this case, I'm gonna fill in the missing data with the word none. I'm going to be going feature by feature just so I can find out what is the best replacement value for that specific feature. I'm going to be doing them all except for the sale price because you just want to leave the sale price alone. Now I'm moving on to the feature engineering part of the project. And this is where you can find yourself starting to stand out on the leaderboard since this is where you are transforming your raw data into a lot more effective inputs. It's helpful to print out how all of the numerical data is being correlated with each other because you can start identifying what features are most important in relation to the sale price. I'll usually study this for a bit just to get the feel for the feature engineering and to better understand the project overall. I grouped the ways I did some of the feature engineering into different themes. So this first one is about instead of leaving the year something was built, I'm going to take the year it was sold and then subtract the year it was built to get an age instead. For example, if you have a house that was sold in 2006 and the year the garage was built was in 1996, I'm just going to have the feature now say that the garage is 10 years old rather than the actual year that the garage was built. The floors are also separated as a square footage based on what floor in the house it is. And I would rather see it that I have the square footage of the floors combined, so that's all into one feature. The last two features of the feature engineering I did was one, I wanted to combine the separated full and half baths together, including the bathrooms in the basement. And then two, I figured that if I have the area of the garage, but I'm also given the amount of cars the garage has space for, I can divide the area by the cars to get an area per car number. Since I put off changing any of the outliers earlier, I'm going to get back into getting those organized. After I create another list of the numerical features, I'm searching for each feature's skewness. 
And what I'm doing is if a feature has a SKU number greater than 0.5, I'm going to run that feature through a log transformation to normally distribute it a bit more. And if it's under 0.5, I'll just leave it as it is. And using the true or false column is how I separate it if that row needs a log transformation. This is just me showing that I separated another categorical and numerical data set together in a list because I'm going to start encoding the data. I was using the label encoder before, but it wasn't giving me exactly what I wanted. Like for example, if a data point was listed as none, it could have been encoded as a four, where I would rather have it as a zero because it makes more sense to be like an ordinal number. So the features you see here are ordinal type data points. So I can set up this if else statement to encode just a bunch of them. And essentially, I'm going to go through each feature, find the ones that are ordinal and set up the label encoding for it. And as you can see here, I can now feel more confident that they're coded the way I would want them to be. I merged the lists of ordinal columns I had and subtracted them from the entire list of categorical columns just to get a remaining list, which by default has to be the columns which will go through a one-hot encoding. I also dropped the first column of each in the one-hot encoding. This is another trick you can do, since you only need one less column for each one-hot encoding, and it still makes sense for the model. And to follow up on what I mean by a trick, let's say I had three separate columns. We'll keep it simple. We have a red, a blue, and a green. Well, if you have those three columns, one of them is going to have a one under it. Like, let's say the house was red. That means we have a one under red. So the other two is going to be a zero. Well, if you only had two columns and both of them were zeros, you know by default that the other one has to be a one. So that's where that trick comes in, where you can use one less column in order to get what you need. Now that all the missing values have been filled in, that categorical data has been encoded, and all the other little things are done, it's finally time to move on to the model part. I took the data frame I was using for everything and I split it back up into train and test sets. I also found it helpful to perform a log transformation on the sale price itself since it did need it to help the outlier situation from way back in the beginning. In order to fine tune the models that I was using, I used Optuna. It essentially takes the ranges as inputs for all the parameters that you would use for a model and it finds out what is the best loss rate given those parameters. And then I have it so it saves the parameters so I can use those exact ones for my model later. It does take a longer time to run, but honestly it saves a bunch of time with the trial and error of having to fine tune your models. The models I used in this case were Cat Boost, which is what you see shortened up as Cat, and then XGB Boost. Now, based on the parameters that the Optuna came up with, I'm going to apply that to the models. You can see all the parameters I've specifically laid out at the top now. So when I call the regressor for each model, I can set it up as those best parameters and run it on the train set and the target variable. My strategy for using these models is to perform a tenfold cross validation for each. And then getting the average root mean squared error, I can play around with the models to combine them for a greater score together. This 80% cat boost and 20% XGB I did come to from trial and error, but now I can run this final prediction on the test set. And now putting the file submission together in a format that the competition will accept. And here is the final look. So after I save the notebook, I go to the competition and submit it to the leaderboard and I get a final score of 0.11782. And when I hop to find out what position I am on the leaderboard, there I am at number 71. Thanks for watching this video on the Kaggle competitions for the house prices. If you have any questions on it, just let me know in the comment section and then I will respond to you. 
And I'm also going to be working on more projects, so feel free to subscribe so you don't miss the next one.